Hello, I'm giving my presentation on introduction to Cayley graphs. So Cayley graphs were originally developed by Arthur Cayley, and he's the same person who developed Cayley tables originally. So Cayley graphs aren't always taught in modern algebra because they aren't fundamental and they're more of a tool to understand the group rather than a fundamental concept. So, Cayley graphs are a really good way to display, um, to display operations over a group. So usually throughout the class, we've displayed operations in a group either algebraically or geometrically. So what am I mean by algebraically is that um, we will use like symbols to demonstrate that we're performing an operation, like when we're doing uh, an operation over triangle symmetries, we'll usually use row two or something like that or mu one. And if we want to say we're operating row two and mu one, we just put it like this, or we sometimes use the, uh, the numbers over here. Um, however, sometimes we've seen it um, geometrically too. So we'll start if we try to, if we want to show that we're operating row two with mu one, we start with the triangle row not, and then we perform the operation with row two in order to get the intermediate triangle. And then we perform the operation with mu one in order to get the end product. And both ways result in the same answer, but one is just doing it is showing it in more of a uh, intuitive way. So the way I see it is that algebraically kind of relates to Cayley tables and geometrically kind of relates to Cayley graphs. So the different parts of a Cayley graph. So um, graphs always have nodes and edges. And in this case, both of those kind of correspond to uh, groups, the set in the group and the operation of the group. So the set of the group corresponds to the nodes and the operation of the group corresponds to the edges. So if we're trying to go from element to element with an operation with some other element, this arrow right here indicates that we're performing um, the operation row one, row two, and that results in row not. Um, we'll color code the arrows to indicate which element we're operating the element with. So if we're color coding a green, I color code this one green. So this means row one times mu one, and that results in mu two. And if you notice that we can also do mu two times mu one, and that results in row one. So we can go back and forth because of the property that mu one times mu one inverse equals E. So whenever we have that property, we can just combine that into one line. So the generating set of a group um, is called, is what, um, is what generates the, the, the group. So it's a subset of the group. And if we combine the elements in any way in the subset, we can um, generate the entire group. So for example, the triangle symmetry group can be generated by mu one and row one. We already saw that uh, mu three equals row two times uh, mu one. So that also equals row one squared times mu one, which is just a decomposition into these two elements. So this kind of introduces a new definition of what a cyclic group means. So it's interesting um, to note that we can now define um, a cyclic group as a group that has with a generating set of order one. So for example, Z's, for example, Z can be written as um, the generation, the generating set of one and that uh, generating set has order one. So that means that Z is cyclic. So um, we can see the properties, some properties uh, of a group with the Cayley graph, which is pretty interesting. And that's kind of similar to how we can see properties with the Cayley table. So 
if I color code this to have row one be the blue arrows and view one be the green arrows, then we can see some properties showing up in the graph. So for example, we see that the graph is not cyclic because it has two different colors. Like I said on the last slide, um, how this, how uh, Cayley graphs relate to cyclic groups is if this, if the Cayley graph only has one color, that means that there's only one generator in the um, generating set, which means with our new definition that the set, that the group is cyclic. Um, so if this were cyclic, it would only have one color arrow. And we can also see that this is not a Boolean. So say we started at row not, and we wanted to perform the operation row one, mu one. So the first operation row one would end up, end us up at row one. And then the second operation mu one would end us up at mu two. If it was a boolean, this would be equal to mu1 row1. However, if we use the Cayley graph, we can see that when we do mu1, we end up uh, at this first triangle, mu1. And then we perform row1, the row1 operation along this blue line, we end up at mu3. So therefore, we can see that this graph demonstrates that the group is not is not abelian. And um, we can also see from Cayley graphs between two different groups if they're isomorphic to each other. Um, if we had another group like D3, we would see that the Cayley graph will look very similar to this, which means that they're isomorphic to each other. So Cayley graphs are highly connected to the Cayley table. So Cayley table, like I said, is kind of an algebraic a uh, way to demonstrate the properties of a group. So Cayley tables are also are able to help us indicate whether a group is abelian. So in that case, um, the, the table would be symmetric over this diagonal line, which in this case, um, the triangle symmetries also aren't abelian because they're not symmetric over this line. Um, we can also see from uh, Cayley table tables whether uh, the group is uh, is cyclic. That's that happens when we can arrange the table in such a way that we have kind of a cascading effect. However, this is really difficult, and you kind of have to have uh, some kind of other reason to believe that it's cyclic in order to for you to find out how to arrange the letters like this. And then last but not least, uh, you can use Cayley tables. I did this on the last test um, to see if two groups are isomorphic to each other. So as you can see, um, we have that both Cayley tables and Cayley graphs can show whether um, uh, groups are abelian, cyclic, and isomorphic to each other. Um, if you go back to here, we have the same uh, properties. Thank you.